It's a pleasure to see you again. Today we're doing another episode of How Strong Is, and we're talking about Stagnite. We use this guy from beginning all the way into the end game, and you're going to see all the things that he can do. So if you pull this guy, you should know from the beginning, he is worth bringing all the way up to 60 very quickly. He can do so much for you. He's good for Arena. He's good for the clan boss, for Hydra, for all of the dungeons. We're, we're going to go over all of that. But uh, let's talk about his skills to provide some context. His A1 is going to hit an enemy twice and then place a decreased speed. That's a 50% chance to place a decreased speed. This is helpful for going up against somebody like the Fire Knight or the Dark Fae where they're going super fast, so you wanna make sure you're slowing them down, keeping them in check. His A2 provides an AOE decreased defense and decreased attack, and this is important for when you're doing wave clearing or just doing anything in general in the game because um, an epic champion that is not a void champion that can provide decreased defense, the big version of decreased defense and decreased attack and an AOE on top of that, is going to be huge. You're going to be doing more damage to your enemy. You have an increased chance to survive being hit hard because of decreased attack. And this is at a booked up 95% chance. So keep that in mind. It's a 95% chance to place this even if you have enough accuracy, but you can actually make this a 100% chance with the correct masteries that we're going to go over in a minute. He does have a passive that increases accuracy on one ally whenever an ally as a debuff resisted by an enemy. This in and of itself, the buff does have some usage, but it's not that important. I think most of us build our champions with the correct accuracy thresholds that we need to meet from the get-go. And we're gonna be talking about cruelty here for his blessing. Whenever Stagnite hits an enemy, he's going to decrease their defense, the enemy defense, by a certain percentage. And it's actually on a three star, that's gonna be 20% for champions, but 10% for bosses, the higher you go, the bigger that cap is increased, you also get some stat boosts. But I felt like this was really important, um, especially early on, because being able to decrease the innate defense of an enemy is going to help you go through the waves or go through content a lot sooner, especially with his A2. Now, when it comes to his masteries, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these masteries. These are masteries that I use, um, but you don't have to use these exact masteries. We're taking the defense tree for extra res, but that's not why. Um, like it's it res is helpful, but we're taking that specifically to go over here to go to improve parry. He needs to be surviving quite a bit, uh, especially for when you start to use him in the end game. You want him to survive a bit, and oftentimes crit hits will kill. I take improved parry most of the time over blast proof because even though most of the bosses do AOE attacks, most of the time it's that multiplied critical damage that is going to kill you. If you can decrease that by 8%, it's, that's a bit. We're taking extra heals, and we're also gonna be taking a chance to remove a random debuff. Whenever Stagnite loses 25% or more of his HP, we're going to be taking more damage mitigation. This is going to decrease the damage received from a specific champion up to 6%. And over the longevity of a run, you're going to be giving Stagnite his own longevity. Retribution is going to give you a chance to counterattack whenever he loses a lot of HP at once. Keep in mind, this is more for an end gamer mastery build. So if you're a little bit in the new game and you're thinking about using him in something like clan boss, I would take a different route. I would probably take crit rate, crit damage, you know, the standard clan boss uh, stuff, life drinker, um, you could take single out, and I would take bring it down, methodical, and then war master for that extra damage. On the support tree, we're going for accuracy. Accuracy is important to place those debuffs with stagnite. We're taking accuracy here, accuracy here, more accuracy here. And we're taking Arcane Celerity. So he places all those debuffs. This is going to give him a chance to increase turn meter by 10% whenever uh, one of those debuffs is removed or it's expired. And that's important because we want Stagnite to take as many turns as possible. We wanna make sure he's moving fast. His priority stats, spoiler alert, are going to be speed and accuracy. Most of your support champions that place debuffs are going to have this um, priority setup, speed and accuracy. We're taking Lore of Steel so that his base stat set bonuses from artifacts are increased by 15%. This is only 
for stat set bonuses from artifact sets, by the way. Then we're gonna be taking Evil Eye so we can decrease target turn meter, which is help for, helpful specifically um, for the Dark Fae and for the Fire Knight. So you're gonna see when that shield comes down, we're gonna be pushing back turn meter. Oh, this also works for the waves. So you can push back turn meter with his AOE skill. It's a smaller turn meter pushback, but still. Then we're taking Sniper. Remember I was talking about how his A2 was at 95%. Well, if you take Sniper, that's 100% chance. And then all you have to worry about is getting the correct amount of accuracy. Master Hexer, taking an extra chance to extend the duration of any of our debuffs that we place down. So speed, decrease defense, decrease attack. We'll have uh, a chance to be three turns instead of just two turns. And then for his T6 mastery, we're gonna be taking Oppressor so that he has a um, turn meter fill rate of up to 10% for each active debuff. This is gonna make sure that he's uh, filling his turn meter a lot faster so that he can take those said turns that we were talking about. When it comes to sets for building Stagnite out, I could see you probably putting him in perception or like accuracy and speed. But the way that I have him built out is I have him in speed, not by design, but just because I needed speed on him. And I have him in immortal because uh, where I use him in the end game, I need him to have a little bit more survivability, but if you're uh, a little bit in the newer game, maybe don't consider this. Mainly worry just about making sure he goes fast and accurate. Um, these are the pieces of gear, in case you're wondering or worrying about speed and accuracy for the most part. And then um, survivability, and you'll see that there's some damage that I'm looking for. These are the stats that I have on Stagnite. Main focus, priority stats are going to be speed right here and accuracy. And for the content that I use them in, specifically mostly Dark Fate and Hard Fire Knight, this does it just right. I also want him to have some HP, some defense. And that's because the Hard Fire Knight smacks really damn hard. So having that in conjunction with some healing ensures that Stagnite doesn't die. Now, I did a video talking about my Hard Fire Knight 10 team, which is 100%. I did almost 300 runs, I dumped 10,000 energy into the Hard Fire Knight 10 during the last 3x Savage event. In one of those runs, Stagnite actually did get hit pretty hard and he died. The run still completed, it didn't fail. They were able to do it without him, but the fact that he died pushed me to want to build him with Immortal, some more survivability stats. I also put some attack, 100% crit rate, and some crit damage. It's not perfect, I would like to have more um, damage on him because he does help when it comes to clearing out waves or doing damage to the bosses. If you're wondering how I got the Stagnite Gilded Glider skin, I won it in a tournament. It was pretty much given to everybody though, uh, as long as you met those those uh, tournament thresholds, like if you uh, got all the rewards, basically. It, it wasn't like a first place thing. It was more like, hey, if you complete this tournament, you'll get him. But this is what he normally looks like. Uh, the first place that I wanna show you guys is the Fire Knight. He is in my Fire Knight Hard 10 team. My best time is two minutes. It's usually around somewhere between uh, two minutes to two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, and so when it comes to uh, using Stagnite in the dungeons, he's almost imperative for something like this. When you're trying to clear through the waves, you pretty much need somebody to place the decrease defense. Uh, AOE, by the way, area of effect on all enemies, so that you can get through the waves a lot sooner because without somebody doing AOE decrease defense, your dungeon times are gonna be a lot um, slower. He helps to improve those times, or I guess anybody who does AOE decrease defense is going to be able to um, provide that for you. Stagnite just happens to be an epic champion, a lot more accessible than somebody else, like a legendary champion that does this. So, um, you know, this applies pretty much to like I'm showing you guys here in Fire Knight, but it applies in Dragon just as well, or even like Ice Skull when you're clearing through the waves. Finally, we're here up against the um, the Fire Knight, and if you can get to the Fire Knight in about like a minute, then you know that your wave clearing team is uh, doing pretty well. Of course, you're gonna need the proper setup, proper speed tunes, so just keep that mind, uh, keep that in mind. Now, the Fire Knight does hit pretty hard and he's going pretty fast. That's why Stagnite is here to place the decrease speed so that we can slow him down. Decrease attack will help us to survive a lot um, better because when he does hit, 
oftentimes uh, he does kill us uh, if we don't have the decrease attack on. In fact, one of the times that I was talking about earlier that uh, Stagnite was going up against him, he died. Stagnite died because, you know, everything just lined up. He was low on HP. The decrease attack was up. That's why I put Stagnite in an immortal set. But here we can see that things are looking pretty swimmingly. So we have uh, Nut doing the decrease for the turn meter. And I think you guys actually saw that Stagnite was able to push back the turn meter on the first hit only. It also is nice that Stagnite does have a two hitter on his A1. So yeah, this is the run here. And then of course, having the decreased defense helps out quite a bit because uh, Nut is able to use his Blessed Bash on him. And we're gonna be doing a lot, more. we're gonna be hitting uh, Cap, I think, with the decreased defense. So it's important to have somebody who does that. And you know, having Stagnite here fills the roles of three uh things like he's doing a three-man job three people he does so much and i like champions that do so much in um in uh in raid because if for an example like if you're thinking hydra right or just in this content in, in general like think about it imagine if you had to bring two different champions for decreased defense and then another or and then one for decrease attack Sit down, that's in, that's, when you can have a multi-faceted champion like stagnite there's great value in that stage uh 20 of the ice golem and let's come up with an epic only team here and we'll try not to use void legos like seer to clear through the waves i feel like that's a little bit too unrelatable and let's see let's see what i come up with all right i figured well let's you know i didn't want to spend too much time putting together a team but let's just go ahead and, and run these guys in. I don't even know if uh, some of these guys have um, gear on them, but we're going to go ahead and just throw this on manual for a bit. So the decrease defense is up, and you're going to see here that this is going to smack uh, decently hard. I don't think it's going to one-shot everybody, but you guys get the, the concept. It's basically going to make our, our runs go a lot faster. And then here we have a nuke from... Uh, skull crown and same concept around here except we don't have a reset champion i mean you could put in renegade but we're just not going to worry about that i just want to show you that it, it can be be done we get the decreased defense and the decreased attack and you guys see how much more damage we're doing when we do have those um debuffs on and because the cooldown is so low for stagnite's a a2 ability um you know you're gonna be putting this debuff up quite a bit i don't actually know if uh geomancer's hp burn works against the ice golem i don't think i've ever used geomancer in the ice golem but we're gonna find that out right now so as you guys know the hard ice golem actually does well or not the hard ice golem the ice golem even on normal does hit pretty hard and what you want to make sure or what you don't want to do is hit him so hard that he activates his passive where he counterattacks if you hit him way too hard. But let's go ahead and do that anyway. So here he smacks. You can see that we have some survivability with Yareg here. And we also have the decrease attack, which is huge. So that if we do decide to hit him a little bit too hard, oh, look at that, we got the decrease speed as well. Um, we're able to survive through those heavy hits. These minions are also a little bit annoying because they place the decrease defense on us and they also place the, the heal reduction. So you wanna make sure you're trying to push them back as well. And then let's go ahead and keep this up. Let's throw it on auto and see. And you can see that Geomancer is reflecting some of that damage here. So that's pretty handy to have. I didn't know, I, I actually never used Geomancer before up against the Ice Golem. Getting a little bit spotty here, but I think we'll be fine. Pretty sure we'll be fine. Because why? We got decrease def or decrease attack up. So we're good. Boom. Keep it up. Leave Yarig alone. There you go. So um, we started off in manual. So don't take that two minute run as a as a indicator. Just to show you guys the power of Stagnite in the Heart Ice Golem, that damage mitigation is huge. And then of course, when we're talking Spider, let's go ahead and do 20 as well. Let's just use Nut and... Or stagnate at. So we place the decreased defense, and then Nut's gonna go in, and there's no weaken, so that's an issue. But there you go, 
hitting hitting for quite a bit. We can also place decrease speed and we can push back some turn meter. And now we have our weaken. So I'm pretty sure if we had weaken up as well, this could have one shot it because nut is in savage gear. So there's that. Now we just gotta turn it around and wait for nut to do his blessed bash again. Oh no, Staggy, just in time, there you go. Now ideally you would have somebody who places decreased defense and weaken at the same time, but if you don't, uh, since Stagnite only places decreased defense, you could bring somebody who places weaken and the run would be a lot faster. So we get the decreased defense on the spider and then we get the weaken right here from Taurus and then we're able to one shot the spider right there in seven seconds, three turns. Uh, this was an idea, a concept derived from Sam Stolz, uh, Sam, Stol <laughs> Sam Solstice. Uh, I think he, he did a video and his was a lot, I think it was like five seconds. But again, this is unrealistic. I was just trying to have a little fun. And then if you're trying to build a team for arena, you could definitely have Stagnite uh, in your team as well for a good setup. So what you would have is a speed booster. You wanna make sure you go first, place the AOE decreased defense and then have uh, a nuker, any nuker, it doesn't have to be Sun Wukong, just have somebody to smack after you lay down the decreased defense. So let's try this here. And we're gonna place their skills on cooldown with Yumiko first. So we outspeed the Sippy, and here we're going to place the decreased defense on the entire team. So that way, when, uh, well, when Sun Wukong wakes up, uh, but first, we're, I guess we're just gonna have to stun everybody and probably try to sheep Rotos here. Or we can. Should we do that? Let's try Sheeping Duchess, actually. That way, when it comes to... Let's put this on Sippy. So she, oh, we got resistance. Let's push back turn meter. We did push back some turn meter. We got the decreased defense in there as well. Let's push back Rotos. Uh, that way, when Sun Wukong finally does take a turn, we're able to... Oh, Armand's killed uh, Rotos. Uh, when Sun Wukong does take a turn, we're able to uh, smack that much harder. Like I kind of messed things up here. Sorry. Here we are. Okay. They're well, you know. Come back, why don't you? Let's go sheep you now. And then so not not the perfect setup because Sippy keeps on sleeping him. Go. And now we can our mods doesn't have enough accuracy. There we go. And Push back that. Poke you, so then you put yourself to sleep. Push back turn meter, and then we can nuke. Uh, let's find a better uh, example. Setup is pretty much the same as I was trying to explain for Arena. You could put Stagnite in and have your team go first so that you can lay down the decreased defense and decrease attack, but mainly the decreased defense. And then you would have, um, well, our is gonna be here to take turn meter and we'll try to stun Mithrala here. Oh, she resists it. Of course she does. Pretty good. Maramans is actually not uh, too well built yet. I'm still testing him out, testing the waters with him. But now we can hit our AoE and smack. So that would be um, an, an ideal setup in the beginning. Some of you guys might not have some of the well-tenured champions, but the idea still remains the same if you're trying to do this and Stagnite can fill the role for setting up um, the right team. Speed boost. And then we're going to have decreased defense. Ideally, you could have somebody that places decreased defense and weaken for extra damage, and then a nuker to lay down lay down the nukes, so they could uh, farm your teams a lot faster. Okay, so it was a good idea to bring Tormund in. I got out sped, and then decreased defense and weaken. Let's go ahead and I should have frozen actually. That's actually fine. That's fine. And then now that we have decreased defense and weaken, Trenda didn't do it. Weak Trenda. Not doing enough. There you go. And then obviously when it comes to the Demon Lord or even Hydra, Stagnite does warrant a spot. As somebody who places the decreased defense and the decreased attack, you could uh, survive and do a lot more damage to the clan boss if you have Stagnite in there. Just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and do a epics only team for Hydra. We, we got an epic only team together for Hydra normal. Let's go ahead and we're going to throw in manual at first for the setup. So there are two options here and it doesn't look like the head of 
poison. There's a head that places the smoke clouds, so sometimes what I like to do is single out this head that cleanses and then slow her down with the decreased speed. So that way Ugo can place block buffs. That way the, the cloud or the, the poison clouds don't go up from the other Hydra head because it's blocked and then she cleanses and that's usually how I stop my run. But we're going to do AoE decrease defense. And we're not going to worry about the HP burns yet. We're just going to place the AoEs. We're going to skip because this head is going to cleanse. We can do a hard hit here though with the Royal Guard. Uh, decently, decently did, did some damage there. I think only about 100 I saw, 100,000. I haven't used Royal Guard in a long time. His builds are outdated. But we got... Oh, that's the other thing. Inquisitor Shamales here for dealing with this head of fear. And we can go ahead. We can't aim down this head because he's got an 85% chance of re or 75% chance of redirecting. We can just focus on this head here. Okay, we can try to slow this head down because he's going to place block buffs or he's going to place reflect damage. And we want to make sure that we're getting we're getting our um, what do you call it? block buffs up before that reflect damage goes up because that can kill us. This head is about to place the shield. She's going to place the shield on the lowest HP champion. I do want to get this head out of the way as well. So we're going to place this. Now, he can't redirect this, so I can actually aim with Geomancer on this head and it gets resisted. Perfect. Whatever. Let's just let's just let it let it ride. Place the weakens on everybody. And we can go ahead and place those block buffs up so we don't have to worry about that reflect damage. We just got to make sure that this head is the head we want to keep alive. I like to aim down on this head, make sure that her health or his or her, their health gets low enough so that this, um, get out of here, so that this head will place the shield on the head of mischief. You kind of want her to survive whenever you do have Inquisitor Shemael in the team. All right, let's try his HP burn again on this head. Finally, it lands. There we go, we got the shield up just the way we want it. And now whenever they attack, all of that damage is going to be reflected on this head right here. And let's go ahead and just let it go on auto and see where we end up at. I do think that this is going to be an easy one key. The key requirement for normal is going to be 6.6. .6. So uh, this is something you could put together. 6.6 .6 damage like if you don't have skull crown for an example um just look for another aoe damage dealer this is the thing about raid a lot of people will say something like oh i don't have this champion then wait till you do because that's what raid is raid is like okay here's the content and again this content for, for an example hydra isn't meant for newer players that's the way raid is it's either you know you can do it now or you can't do it now so come back later when you do have the champions or the tools to do it so come back when you have the gear come back when you have the specific champions otherwise you won't be able to do it and i wouldn't stress over it something to to be aware of if you play long enough i guarantee you'll get them you'll get these champions all these champions uh now are food for me whenever you have a decapitated head it's not dead it's decapitated so when you whenever you go up against a deca uh, decapitated head you're going to be dealing uh, like 200 percent more damage i think is the number so what you want to do is focus on this head and right here this head the head of wrath hits pretty hard so when you can get decreased attack on it definitely get decreased attack i wish we got decreased um attack and the block buffs up so that they didn't get the buffs but you know it is what it is it looks like we're gonna get our one key we're gonna hit that 6.6 let's go ahead and just aim down this head doesn't have the protection on with more reliable and we got our 6.6. .6. So this is a one key. And look at this, guys. Stagnite is the last man standing. He is the last epic standing. There it is. So yeah, 8.42 million damage. It's an easy one key. We're not going to keep it, though. Awesome support champion. But you know who else is an awesome support champion? Mighty Uko. And he's a great Hydra champion as well. A legendary support champion. Go ahead and check him out here.